Back live with you tonight here on In Focus. Uh, the Mpopo Health Department has begun contact tracing after confirmation of uh, Cora cases in the province. The patient is a 52-year-old male from Greater Guiana who recently traveled to Amanskral for a workshop. Response teams have also been activated in the Mopani and Waterpik districts. Uh, for more on this, we're joined now by the Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba. MEC, good to have you and thank you very much for your time. Is it just a single case that uh, you are reporting in the province or are there others uh, and uh, the area in which uh, the case is, is, is from uh, and what could have possibly been the source? Uh, good evening, Tawa, and evening to all your viewers out there. What we can confirm is that, yes, indeed, it's one case of a resident from Guiana municipality who is a public servant. Uh, his workplace is Musina municipality. He traveled with others for a training workshop in Hamaskran, where in after he spent two weeks there, he fell ill and he was admitted. The confirmation results came uh, to show that he has tested positive. As a precautionary measure, when NICD informed us that one of your residents um, who might have contracted the uh, ba ba bacteria here, the infection in Hamaskra, it's, it's positive. We, even though when we do the risk analysis, it was very clear when you look at the incubation period of between five and seven days, and um, he could have uh, chances of him having it being infected in Hamaskral and looking at the current outbreak. We did not leave it to chance. Hence, over the weekend, we, we deployed our team of tracer team, the response team in both Mopani uh, district, uh, so that they do contact tracing at his home and also another contact tracing at his workplace with his colleagues and where he is, is working. So up to so far, what we can indicate is that in all our screening, we have not seen any uh, one who could be a suspect or who could be having any symptoms. So everyone who has been in contact with him, it's, it's cleared from cholera. However, we're saying the fact that there is an outbreak in Hamaskra, if you look at Pinas Refir, which is in Pope, it's just 10 kilometers from Hamaskral, or just slightly more than that. If you look at the current, in terms of the district in Zimbabwe that have been confirmed to have a, an outbreak, Bait Bridge District, which is uh, just out in our border of Musina, has been uh, added to be one of those. So that is why, as a province, we felt we're not going to wait until there is a confirmed case. We have started with a campaign. Our teams are already at Inas Refir, working especially with both municipalities, the district municipality of Waterbeck and the local municipality of Bilabil. Our officials have been there the whole day. We will also be going there through the, doing the uh, work with the schools, educating everyone because we've identified these two municipalities, which is Bilabila and also Musina, uh, because when we look at their neighbors, uh, we have seen uh, those those outbreaks. So that is the current work that we are doing. And we, together with the MEC for Coxta, we will be activating our provincial disaster management uh, team in, for all the municipalities because uh, one thing with cholera, you know, having, having to treat cholera at some stage in my, in my life, I know how difficult is it to treat it once you have an outbreak because here you are dealing with water supply, clean water, and proper sanitation, which we still have a, a challenge. So the best way is to make sure you educate the people and show them how to protect themselves from drinking contaminated water and from eating contaminated food. If you do that, uh, that is one of the best ways to can win uh, fighting cholera. Yeah. Well, coming, I wanted to ask if there is a, a collaborative effort being uh, advanced as far as the water infrastructure is concerned and maybe in terms of testing processes and ensuring the quality uh, assurance uh, pr processes are put in place? Yes, as I've indicated, I was discussing with the executive mayor for Waterpeck and also the mayor there to say we, we, are, we have started the process, they must start the process of, of water testing. We will be also be meeting with the uh, water and sanitation uh, department uh, in the province, the provincial office here, 
uh, so that we can uh, strengthen our collaboration. Uh, because yes, indeed, it is a collaborated effort which can make us uh, to prevent. But also what is important is that we must be alive to the reality that uh, supply of water to all our villages will not ha- happen overnight. Hence, if you look at our messages, we are saying, how do we then empower, especially our rural community? Because, you know, when you're dealing with cholera, what complicates it is like, unlike when we're dealing with COVID, COVID was uh, infecting me and you, people who can afford, people whom if you educate that sanitize, wear masks, people can be able to do that. But when you deal with co- cholera, unfortunately, uh, it is a disease that just shows us how as governments, we are not doing well in terms of provision of uh, clean water to our people. So it shows the poverty uh, level, and it then exposes those. So, so that is why, as a department, together with our team, we've come up with ways on how to, you know, educate uh, uh, communities. For instance, we are saying, try to drink safe water. Those who, who uh, their source of water is the river. We are saying before you drink any water, uh, which you are not sure, try to boil it uh, and, and drink it. Uh, or if you can't boil, you can use your bleach uh, to be able to sterilize your water. We are also saying before you prepare food, try to wash your hands. We are also working with those donors who used to donate sanitizers during the COVID-19 to say, can they help us to donate, especially in our schools where we are still having the challenges for those sanitizers. And we are now again moving a step forward to say, if you can have any sign or symptoms, for instance, you can have the water, rice watery stools, diarrhea, when you are vomiting, when you are irritable, joint pains, all those, those symptoms, especially diarrhea and vomiting. Make sure, before you even think of the clinic, boil water, Put in one liter and put eight tablespoons of sugar and a half teaspoon of salt. Drink while you are seeking help because that will save your life. Because if we don't intervene within a certain period of time, short period of time, cholera due to diarrhea and vomiting where you will even shut down your kidneys yeah. and or hypovolemic shock, you can just die easily. And some say cholera is one of those outbreak that are very difficult to deal with, but we can be able to protect uh, our people and prevent them from dying. Yeah. Speaking of any intervention, how is the public servant, the official, doing? That is another uh, level wherein we are saying we should never be the because one team. If you remember during my budget speech on the 18th of April already, because there was an outbreak around the Sadek region, uh, we, we, as a country, we had one case in, in Hauke. We had already warned uh, the, the, the municipality. We had already started the work. In terms of the hospitals, we were saying our facilities must be prepared. We have already conducted in-service training for all our hospitals, uh, first-line defenders who are our clinics, which is the primary health care nurses, and also our doctors, especially casualty officers, to remind them, because some of these doctors who have graduated, they've never treated cholera in their entire life. So that is why the delay probably of pro- providing the correct treatment could be result into the loss of life. Hence, we, we state of pre- preparedness in terms of facilities, we, we had already prepared ourselves to say if one province has got one case, we know this is one thing that you must understand. They do not know of any boundaries. Uh, they don't have, need a passport for the disease to move from Bait Bridge to come to South Africa or from Horas Bridge to get into South Africa. It, it, those diseases do not care about that. Hence, we are saying, knowing our situation, we are a rural province and we are a poor province. And Tavo, the only way that we have been able to save the lives of our people is to become proactive. Yeah. Some people always accuse us of exaggerating, but I can tell you the exaggerations do assist us. We have just defeated malaria, which was giving us, we thought it was going to give us a problem two weeks ago, but we have worked very hard in preventative methods. 
and now the situation is as normalized as stable. We believe that by working together with all the, the all spheres of government, we will be able to make sure that we protect and preserve the lives of the people of this province. MEC, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on. That's the MEC for Health in Limpopo, Dr. Popi Ramatuba there. I confirmed for us that's indeed one case in the province, a gentleman who had travelled from Amman's